you may not always update your camera to the latest firmware update. I'm finally updating my Fujifilm firmware to 7.0 and my motivation to do this is to check out something outside of the autofocus. What is up? Welcome back to another one. Hope your week is going well so far. And as you can tell from the intro, obviously I'm updating my Fujifilm X-H2S to the latest firmware update for 7.0. No! No! And I wanted to focus on something, you know, outside of the autofocus because there are plenty of good videos out there that kind of explain that in, you know, more depth. And the thing that I wanted to focus in on was actually the film simulation, the Riela Ace film simulation. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And like many things, you were curious in regards to how things even came about in the first place, especially with this film simulation in itself. Now, after a few searches online, I did find a spot to where I could get some type of idea as far as like where this film simulation came from. Now, according to the f stoffer site, the Rayleigh Ace film simulation is the second iteration of the first film stock iteration called Riala. You know, but in 1998, it was relaunched as Riala Ace, and it was designed to provide more accurate colors and finer grain into the images. Unfortunately, the Riala Ace film stock only had a 14-year run before it was discontinued in 2012. Your membership to the Continental has been by thine own hand. Revoked. With no place in mind, I decided to go back to this pond area to really get a feel for as far as like what the images would look like in this particular scenery. Get out, just capture something real quick, maybe something that piques my interest. Look for something that may be a little bit challenging for me to kind of gauge in a sense. And that's kind of like what I want to do. Ooh, here's an airplane. Hold on. There's no really leading lines. Well, you kind of see them as far as like how they cut the, the grass. I can see it right here, but let's see. See that right there? I almost stepped in that, that hole. It's kind of dangerous right there. Can I have it right there? <laughs> Watch where I'm stepping at, but. I did come across this graffiti metal sheet degraded boat dock area which I felt like it had a lot of character to it. Now, combine that with the storm clouds that were out, it didn't provide a lot of color. So like I said before, it was definitely like a flat neutral color, but there was some type of earthy type green type of vibes that I could still pull from the images that I was capturing. Even though the weather was challenging and it didn't have the most perfect conditions to where it would be ideal to really just get some shots with the light and the shadow type of combinations that I was looking for, I would say is that it still prompted me to utilize my surroundings to try to create something in that moment. It looks to be like this used to be like a, a boat dock area um, or just a boat uh, area to where you just kind of like drag your boats within this pond area. That's what it looks to be a while ago, but try to add some blockage in there. Okay, that's good. Let's go any further back to right here. Let's watch play one. Yeah, there we go. Damn. I'm liking this building area. It's under construction. This the there we go. Within that limited space, within that pond area, I was able to find like two areas of canoes and bench texture that I can really try to build my composition off of. I think for me, the longer I spend out there, the more I begin to find like different types of scenarios and scenes to where I can create something. I really use the canoes as a focal point within my images to kind of build from. Like I used it from the perspective of, hey, I'm gonna layer it from, you know, this angle or this perspective. And just really try to capture something a little bit different in that particular moment. I 
I did find some wildlife that was out there, but they were too far away to be able to get really in focus to capture some details with. And I did notice that every time that I try to get close to the wildlife, like within distance to where I could really just crop in the images and posts, it just felt like they just, they weren't feeling it. They just kept moving further away or just flying away from me. So that was definitely something that was a bummer, but you know, it is what it is. You take what you get a lot of times. I would say that trying to encompass the whole scenery itself and really just identifying the scale between the wildlife and the scenery was definitely something I would say is that um, was unexpected, but I definitely enjoyed it from what I can get out of it. I think my two favorite shots was the canoe bench shot and then also to the boat dock um, house area. I think within both shots, they had the right amount of layering and also texture that created somewhat of an unexpected balance that I was looking for. I think despite the limited wildlife, the storm clouds and the neutral colors, I still found an opportunity to still build from whatever the environment presented to me at the time frame. Understanding that those things are beyond your control, you just have to take advantage of what the atmosphere presents to you. Well, that's all I have for this video. As always, continually appreciate the process. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Deuces. And uh, another one. Yes, sir. Let's get it.